Hey guys, coming at you today with a Bible study video. Um, before we begin, let's start in prayer. Heavenly Father, I pray that you would just uh, use me, Lord, so that you would speak to your people. I pray that uh, those watching and listening to your word would hear you speak to them. Uh, give them wisdom, O oh God, for their lives so that they can walk victoriously. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So guys, uh, this Bible study has been sitting on my heart pretty heavy the last couple days. Um, again, still clearing up my sinuses things here, so, you know, keep on having me in your prayers. But um, it is clearing up, so thanks for the prayers so far. And um, so the Lord has just been um, weighing this pretty heavy on my heart. This is a message about premarital sex. So let's go ahead and get into this word, guys. I'm not going to sugarcoat anything because we're all um, children of God here. <laughs> we can handle it, you know. All right, so it begins with God hates premarital sex. Um, this video is not about marriage. It's not about the marriage relationship because marriage is a covenant, not a contract. We're talking about premarital sex today. And let's be clear, God does hate all sin. Um, sin is anything that keeps his children uh, from coming to him. That could be unbelief, um, idolatry of a person, place, or thing, um, and just plain old disobedience to the Holy Spirit. I mean, you know, if you don't move when he tells you to, you sin in, you know, stuff like that. So sin is anything that keeps, you know, God's children from coming to God himself. Um, so it all starts in our hearts, and um, that's what keeps us from running to our Father, and we have to realize that premarital sex is in our culture today. It's advertised. It's glorified. Um, society just doesn't like, I, I don't know why, it just doesn't seem to like to talk about the consequences of premarital sex. But it just, it just, um, it, it just glorifies it again. Like I was saying, um, there's a scripture here I want us to turn to. Let's turn, let me get my handy dandy Bible out. Let's turn to Proverbs chapter 29. That's going to be verse 18. So I hope you came with your Bible ready to a Bible study. So Proverbs chapter 29, verse 18. Let us read. I got the NIV version. Where there is no revelation, people cast off restraint. But blessed is the one who heeds wisdom's instruction. So, <laughs> when we... When we look at premarital sex in the culture and when when we participate ourselves in premarital sex, you know, okay, let's just back up a second. We might ask, you know, why would God care? Why would God even care about what I do with my own body? I've got a great spiritual relationship with him. That's something we might say when we're, you know, either participating in it or we know people who are, um, different things like that. So that might be a, a question we try to ask. Um, but listen to this here. This is what the Lord gave me. He said, when we get, when we get serious enough with another human being, um, to the point of touch, whether we care about them or not, like if you're dating them and you actually like care about them, or if it's like you could care less about them and it's some kind of one night stand, it doesn't matter. When you get to that point of touch, um, that little touch right there, like just the, the physical being like the touch that can derail your entire relationship with God because then as the scripture said you're unrestrained at that point yeah uh, you begin to perish at that point um what you might say what I don't feel like I'm perishing um I don't feel unrestrained you know I, I feel great actually well okay but let's just say um you know let that person leave you you know, you were really committed and that person leaves you, you'll be feeling the whole weight of the world. You know what I mean? Um, or if the Holy Spirit tells you that you need to leave the person, you're going to be like, oh, Lord, I, what, what, you, how are you going to hit me with this? You know, you're not going to you're not going to be, you know, easy to give it up because, again, it has become a sin. The person, place or thing has become an idol in your heart, which we talked about at the beginning. Are you guys sticking with me? <laughs> Um, so, you know, it's become an idol of the heart. So now it's hard to give up something because you're putting it above, uh, where you place God in your life. 
So I, I hope that broke it down just quite a little bit uh, for you guys. So when this happens, um, you become so attached to the person um, because, you know, that physical touch, hey, not going to lie, guys, it's pleasure. And we all know it if we've done it. It's technically pleasure, physical pleasure. Um, if you're not married, it's not necessarily spiritual pleasure. It might actually drain you. Let's be honest about that. If you've been with if you've been with someone and, you know, they were kind of messed up, then you've been able to feel that spiritual drain um, after, you know, doing that touch. But um, although, I mean, yeah, you do climax. It's a, it's a physical pleasure. Um, but this person, because again, this is premarital sex, it's not even your spouse, but this person might not even be like the same spiritual level as you. Um, they could be like complete atheist and you're a devout Christian. Okay, uh, you're begging God to somehow work things out um, just because you put so much time and energy into the relationship. Rather than stepping back and saying, you know, like the scripture said, where, where there's no revelation, the people perish. So rather than stepping back and having revelation of the situation and saying, okay, God, I see what's going on here. We touched. So now I'm too attached. Let me just reel this in. I understand what's going on. Rather than doing that, we're over here begging God, oh, please let this work out. Oh, I don't want all my time to be wasted. I don't want all the energy I spent to be wasted. Well, okay, well, God is a spirit. And let's go to the scripture. Let's go to the scripture. Come on. Go to John chapter 4, verse 24. We break in these scriptures in today, y'all. We break in it down. So John chapter 4, verse 24. All right. Everyone there? All right. John chapter 4, verse 24. God is a spirit, and his worshipers, those that worship him, must worship him in the spirit and in truth. In the spirit, okay, I have a great spiritual relationship with you, God, and in truth. Okay, I don't want to give up this atheist boyfriend. Can we, can we please tie this into real life application, guys? Um, let's go also, what is it, um, the truth that you know will set you free, will, will make you free. Let's find that one. Uh, let's do John 8. Go to John 8, chapter 32. I'm not just coming up with this stuff, guys. The word tells us. Um, so, yes, so uh, John chapter 8, verse 32. Then the truth that you know, uh, no, no, then you will know the truth. And the truth that you know will set you free. This is the NIV version I'm reading from. So when you know that's the truth, when you get the revelation, and it's not like you can say you didn't know because you're watching this video right now, and I'm telling you, so now you can't say you didn't know. The truth that you know, and you shall know the truth, and the truth that you know will set you free. You can either make the decision to be set free, to do God's will, or to stay bound. Um, let's also go to, um, go down to verse 36 really quick. So if the sun sets you free, you will be free indeed. You have to understand that no one else can save you. No one, you can't save yourself. Um, other religions can't save you. Jesus is the only way. He's the one who paid the price on the cross. He's the one who has restored the way to God. So whom the Son sets free, who Jesus Christ, the Son of God, sets free, is free indeed. So let's just grasp that concept here, guys. Whom the Son sets free is free indeed. He sets you free from this relationship. Please stay free from the relationship. Let's not try to get back into it so soon or um, at all, whether God is telling you not now or not ever. So let's not, let's not do that. So, going back to the you spending so much time and energy into a relationship, did you notice that that's the same time and energy that you put into that person that you could have spent putting into building the kingdom of God, um, becoming an independent, spiritual, uh, spiritually independent person, um, beginning to connect with other 
uh, people who are on the same spiritual level as you, not even so much as an intimate relationship, but just like getting a friend network going on. That could have been great time well spent. So you could have a support system. So rather than, so when you know something's not right, and the Holy Spirit has given you red flags all over the place, but you compromise and you go along with premarital sex, you go along with it because culture makes it look so appealing. Okay, we get that. We're not going to say that they don't. We know that they do. So culture does make it so appealing. We can't lie about that. But when you decide to still go along with it, because it's the choice is yours. They may present it, but the choice is yours. So when you decide to go along with it, that's the point where you cease to begin or where you cease to stand on God's own word that says, be ye not. Oh, let's go to scripture. Hold on. I'm not lying about this. It's in the word. Go to Romans chapter 12, verse two. Let's all go there. Romans chapter 12, verse two. Romans chapter 12, verse two. So again, when you get to that point, you've accepted what the world is offering. That's when you're not doing this. It says, do not be conformed to the patterns of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what is God's will, what God will, what God's will is his good, pleasing and perfect will. So be ye not conformed to the pattern of this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you can prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So once you decide, once you make that choice, then you're no longer um, transforming. Your, you're no longer walking in the transformation that you had. Um, you're starting to go back almost. We can't, we can't be people who go back. We have to transform our mind. We have to keep transforming our mind. Uh, it's called the renewing of our mind. Uh, it's a daily thing, really. We have to be in our word. Um, you know, we might not be able to read the Bible 24-7, but, I mean, you could audiobook some of it. You know, we have to come up with crafty ways so that we could stay renewing um, and not begin to go back. And so, um, when you do that, it's like, if just think of it like this. If you're hooked on person A, right, who is not your spouse, um, they're not even spiritually equal with you. How can you say, like the scripture said, oh yeah, I, I know what the perfect and acceptable and good will of God is. How can you say that if, if you're not living that out in your relationships? Um, so you're with person A, right? But let's say that there's a person B. And God has been building up this person since their birth. Um, they're, they've got everything spiritually that you need. But... Again, you won't be able to see that because you're so focused on person A, who you've spent so much time and energy on, that you don't understand that there's either a person B that God has for you or that God needs to separate person A from you so that person A can grow and develop. Um, I know that sometimes happens where, uh, where people get back together after some time and they're both like better for each other. So I know that that happens. But we just have to be on fire for God for ourselves, um, you know, not focused on the person, uh, on a different person, but rather just focusing on us and God. Um, so just different things like that. We have to have the timing. We have to have the wisdom and we can ask for these things in prayer. So it's not like it's it's inaccessible. We can we can ask for knowledge of the timing, knowledge of wisdom in the situation as well as grace to let go for the time. Um, so yes, and then it all starts again with the personal relationship with God. If you don't have an underlying desire to please God in your life, then this video pretty much isn't for you. I know a lot of people could care less about what God thinks. So if you're one of those people, then hey, sorry, this video isn't really for you. But if you're one of those people who are like, oh man, I keep messing up. God, I really just want to do us right. I actually do believe you're real, you know, different things like that. Then, you know, this is for you. If you want to be righteous in the sight of God, I mean, it's through Jesus Christ that we were, you know, made righteous. But hey, if you want to walk in that lifestyle and, you know, not be hypocritical, 
then this this video would be for you. Any video that I make about sin would be for you. Um, because we, as believers, we want to put God at the center of everything. I know a lot of people say make God number one and then have other things, you know, listed after that. But we have to begin to put God at the center of things and have it uh, as like a, a web almost where God is able to be involved in each of those um, stemming, uh, the stem uh, aspects of your life. It, he ha He's able to be, he's able to have a branch into each um, kind of aspect in your life rather than just having him, oh yeah, you number one God, and then all the other stuff under him, he's not allowed to be involved in it. So we have to understand that and that we have to put God at the center of everything. So if that's you today and you need to think about God's will, um, I'm going to tell you you need to think about God's will more than you think about your own will. Um, it may hurt, but let he who has ears, let him hear. If you are not married and, you know, of course you're having premarital sex and you are, you're not married to that person um, and that person you're with is so attached to you, because of the pleasure that you're that you're bringing to them, how ask this? How can they even start to make God, who is your pleasure source, their pleasure source, if you're allowing them to keep making you their pleasure source? A lot of times we say, "Oh yeah, um, we may be having premarital sex, but you know, I'm praying that he'll find the Lord." How? Can you allow them to make God their pleasure source when you are allowing yourself to stay their pleasure source? Stay with me, guys. Essentially, when you do that, you are allowing the person to go on having you as their God instead of God himself. So we gonna, we're going to have to accept this revelation, guys, of this. Ex accept the revelation of it so that... Uh, we can be a restrained people that we won't cast off restraint like the word says. So if you think about it like that, it won't be so hard to let go of the person. Uh, again, whether just for now or for forever, it does happen sometimes. So my point is today, get on fire for God, for yourself, and you'll be able to think clearly and agree with whatever God's will is. If you're on fire for God, you won't like you won't even want to be in a relationship with someone who doesn't know God or someone who's, you know, just faking it in church. You'll be able, like, you'll know that because in your home life, um, or when you guys go on dates or whatever the situation is, you'll know if somebody's really on fire for God, like you are. And if you're on fire, then you're not going to be, it's, it's impossible to try to brush your fire on someone else. I mean, we try a whole lot of times. We try that. Um, but it just, that's not how it works. You have to be on fire for God for yourself as an individual and then be able to link up with someone else who's also on fire for God for themselves. So that's something we're going to also have to begin to understand in our society. Um, another question is, if you're with someone who's not even on the same spiritual level as you, how can you expect them to pull you up when you're going through trials and they don't even have the same source as you, if, if they don't even have the same, um, uh, what is it, the, the same aspect of hope as you, they're not going to be able to speak into your life good things. You'll just be hearing, uh, what is it, uh, what is something like, um, if I don't have love, it just sounds like symbols or something like that. That's kind of the picture I'm trying to paint here. Like, they're going to be trying to, you know, say uplifting things, but it's not the word. And so since you're on fire for God, you're going to be like, boy, what you talking about right now? Thank you. But, you know, like it just won't be what you need. So we have to see it like that as well. And so premarital sex, as well as many other things, um, these things are testing our self-restraint. Um, it's getting God's children off focus. Um, if we were to die today, would we have completed the work that God has for us? Um, or would we say, or would the only thing we'd be able to say is, well, at least I found someone I liked and I was able to have some good sex before I died. Like, would that be the only thing? <laughs> would that be the only thing we would be able to say? Or are we really being mission-minded in this life? Um, because uh, whether you like it or not, time is running out. 
and it's getting more and more evident. Um, of course, I don't know when the word says no one knows, um, but hey, it's we can see things are definitely starting to change in this society, and it's it's sad to see, but hey, it's it's going to happen. It's kind of inevitable. So if you believe Jesus rose from the dead, you had better be in tune with what's going on in culture right now. Distractions are making us lose traction on God's path for us. But be encouraged to let go if God tells you to let go. Because whatever the Holy Spirit prompts um, you to do will work for the good. Um, let's go to that scripture just so you could see. Uh, I'm not trying to give you some, you know, things to just make you feel good. This is actual scripture. Um, so let's go ahead. Let's go to Romans 8, 28. Um, let's see. Romans 8, 28. Okay, everybody there, Romans 8, 28. All right, and we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him and have been called according to his purpose. All right, so um, again, whatever the Holy Spirit prompts you to do, it's for your good. Um, if you're somebody, again, who loves him and you're, you're called to his purpose, all things will work for the good. It's a biblical, a biblical promise. We just read it. So I know you're probably asking, what does she know? She's married. She's got a ring on her finger. She doesn't have these urges that we have as single people. Well, although I'm married now uh, for about two years and I'm 22 now, happy belated birthday to me. Eh, you guys leave that in the comments. Happy birthday. Um, anyway, but although I'm 22 now, I've been married for two years. That means for 20 years, I was unmarried. And if you guys remember from my video, my testimony video, I started really young with my addiction, with my um, sexual addiction. So for a long time, I was not married and I was going through what you guys may be going through with these urges, with these feelings, with these emotions that keep coming up, keep going away for some time and then they come right back up. It's like a cycle. So I am familiar with this. So don't try to discredit me. Okay. God is good. Um, so I want to say with that, I was having premarital sex, so much premarital sex that I was actually unrestrained in my decision to marry. Now, this is also in my testimony video. Even after I became a Christian, I was so attached to my boyfriend at the time. I mean, he's now my husband, but at the time I was so attached to my boyfriend because of that premarital sex that, you know, I, I was one of those who, oh, I thought I could just lift him up and get him on my level spiritually and everything would work out. No, that's not how it works, I learned. So I was in a space. Uh, it got to a point where I needed to choose whether I would let him go now or never. I knew it would be, okay, let him go now or it, I'd never let him go. And I knew that if I didn't let him go, that that would be the path, you know, if, if I didn't cut the cord. And so I decided to say yes. We had actually broken up, um, but uh, when we got back together, I think it was like a week later. It was it was a mess, guys. Go back to that testimony video. You'll see the whole story. But like we got back together after I believe it was like just a week, and you know we were just we were just hot messes. Um, but he proposed to me, and I said yes because again I was so. I was so bound, I want to, the word bound, I was so bound by that desire and the, 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 the want for pleasure, physical pleasure, again, not the same as spiritual pleasure that we can only get from God. I was so bound by that physical pleasure to get my pleasure from him that even though I knew the Holy Spirit was giving me like red flags left and right, even though I knew I still said yes uh, through the, throughout the whole engagement, really, I I was still on my path because when the human person, when the human mind makes up its mind and it has its will, then hey, that's, that's what we go to. So I had it made up and I knew. So because of that, um, I also want to let you guys know that engagement is not marriage. There were multiple times where, you know, during the engagement, I could have easily just, you know, let my pride you know, whatever, go away pride, because right now I need to talk to God. There was plenty of times where I could have did that and said, you know what, God, I need your help. I, I know that you're, I know that you're talking to me. I, I acknowledge it. 
Let's be honest about that. Let's acknowledge it. Um, and I want you to help me out of this, Lord. I know that this is not your timing, not your will, whatever the case may be. And then, you know, God would give you the grace to, you know, end the engagement. And it can be the coldest thing to break up an engagement, especially really late, like day before the wedding late. And I was really close to doing that. Um, but again, I still had that pride up. I still had my, um, my desire. I still had that internal desire to just get that physical pleasure from him. And hey, I mean, <laughs> what, what can I, I mean, what can I say that my mind was made up and don't act like it's just me out there, by the way, you guys are probably looking at me like, Oh, Victoria. Okay. Well, you act like you haven't done that. <laughs> nice try. Um, but anyways, so, um, let me just ask you this. Um, if you are in the engagement and you already know that the Holy Spirit is giving you red flags left and right, and you know that you shouldn't be going on to marry this person either right now or ever, would the pain of one moment, which is breaking up, uh, would the pain of one moment be worth the pain of a lifetime? If you're on fire for God, and this other person somehow is not, um, would the pain of that one moment be worth the pain of a lifetime? Not being able to worship, uh, or put all of your resources and, and your trust in God together as a couple. Would the pain of that one moment be worth more, or would, would, I mean, be worth the pain of your whole lifetime with this person. That's how we have to think about marriage, guys. It's not just, like I said in the beginning, like marriage is not just a contract like the world is starting to make it seem like. Marriage is a covenant. Once you're in it, God will, I mean, give you the grace, but it's not like we should be rushing into these situations um, just so that God can give us grace. We No, that's not how we should do things. Um, but if you think about that, if you do... Um, no, before the marriage, before the marriage happens, before you guys say I do, it's not yet a marriage. You can still say, okay, I changed my mind. <laughs> like it's okay to change your mind before the marriage, but you know, once you're in that marriage, it's a covenant. It's all right. Um, you knew what you were getting yourself into. Um, so as my story goes, instead of giving up my boyfriend, my boyfriend at the time, again, follow me guys, follow me. Um, I got religious instead of giving him up. I got religious. Um, and when I say I got religious, I mean, I wanted to have guilt free sex. Let's be honest. I was like, Oh no, I don't want to give him up, but hmm, maybe if I just get married to him, <laughs> I won't feel guilty, you know? So I tried to play that card and Brownie's drinking water right now. <laughs> Brown. You're so loud, bro. You're so loud. Hi, baby. Hi, little boy. Get in your bed. Hi, baby. <laughs> All right. And so I wanted to have guilt-free sex. And I would say, like, uh, in my mind, I was thinking, well, you know, I'm a Christian and I already knew Christians. You know, we don't we don't have premarital sex. That's not that's not a standard we hold. You know, I would I would be so self-righteous about that. And so I became almost like a Pharisee. You know how they tried to do things, um, they tried to follow the law without having the Holy Spirit guide them. Um, like, you know, how Jesus healed somebody on the Sabbath day. They were they cared more that it was the Sabbath day and they got mad rather than the fact that Jesus healed somebody. Like, I got to that point. I was like, all right, Lord, well, I'll just get married so that I don't feel guilty about having sex. Rather than understanding that my whole mission that whole time should not have been to focus on guilt-free sex. My mission should have been to, one, get on fire for God, um, on my own, of course, and two, to, <clears throat> to allow God to work, to work, um, just to work, to move, uh, to position, to build different people in my life. Um, whoever the person is who would have been, you know, the Lord assigned them to me. Like I should have been focusing on one, again, one, getting on fire with God and two, allowing God to just do what he can only do. Um, and again, that would be, um, just getting everything in place and having the same, 
building us up to that same spiritual level and then having, you know, the revelation of, oh, so it's this person, God, and then you could have the confirmation with God, um, like, oh, yes, yeah, so, and then, you know, the light beams down on them and the angels start singing, however that happens. <laughs> you guys probably might be married out there and you have a story like that, like, you guys both just knew or something like that. I know that that sometimes happens, like, I've heard stories like that. But again, that wasn't my story, but, you know, everybody has their own story. But I know it happens sometimes like that, but that's what we have to re realize. That should, that should be, that's God's perfect idea of what every person's story should be. Uh, again, we should, I'm going to keep on saying this, we should be on fire for God for ourselves. And then the second thing after that is allow God to move, to work, and to build the other person in his perfect timing so that when we get with them, it's God's uh, timing his perfect will, all of those kinds of things like that, um, the one that God wants for us. So going on with my story, um, we did get married, but we had a whole lot of serious issues that whole first year. Um, neither of us were um, meeting each other's needs. We weren't satisfying the other's needs. Um, I know my side of it, I was like, oh, Lord, I, w I wanted a spiritual uh, worshiper husband. How come I didn't get him? Even though I knew the whole time I wasn't going to get that through throughout the engagement, I knew that. But then all of a sudden when I get married, I want to act brand new. Okay, <laughs> so let's just be honest about that. Um, and so I was holding my husband accountable for expectations, again, that I knew he didn't even have before we got married, I knew. Um, but then again, if you've seen my testimony video, you would know that God is gracious and my decision to marry is now covered by the blood of Jesus. It's forgiven. I'm no longer condemned today for that. Um, and you might ask, oh, well, how can you know if something's, you know, covered by the blood and, um, you're forgiven for it? Well, I'm going to tell you guys the story. I don't know if I put this in the testimony video. Oh, wait, I think I did. Um, but so you remember that story like Abraham, he was sacrificing his son, um, I, uh, Isaiah or Isaac. Oh yeah, Isaac. Abraham was sacrificing his son Isaac and he was finna drop that knife down and kill his son. But then right when he did it, the angel or whoever, I, I'm gonna have to read the story again, forgive me guys. But wh whatever it was, the voice of the Lord was like, hey, don't kill your son. I was just testing you. So that's what happened with me and my husband. I was filling those divorce papers all the way out. I was like, God, I'm, I'm so sorry. I knew I shouldn't have done this. Let me get this divorce real quick to please you. And so I was, I got those papers already, but God literally, he spoke to me and he said, no, don't do this. My grace is sufficient for you. So I didn't get the, I didn't get the divorce. And I'm so glad for that today because let's be honest, I would not be here today speaking to you if I would have let go of that marriage. Um, just personally, I wouldn't have been as challenged, um, as I was like, I was, man, I, I really had to build my character through that, um, situation. Um, and I became a, I mean, not to toot my own horn, <laughs> but I became like a pretty great wife out of that. And I realized that, you know, he was a great husband, you know, there was more that meet that met the eye. And so I had to realize that and just really thank God for that, um, that his grace is sufficient for me. And I was able to build my character and build up to a great wife because previously I totally was not. And so um, I'm just grateful again that God stepped into that one. So I know that it's covered by the blood because he literally told me his grace is sufficient for me and I'm covered by the blood. So family, God can use anything for his glory. Again, like I said earlier on, that does not mean that we should go around getting ourselves into these kinds of situations. If we know that we're hooked because of premarital sex, we shouldn't try to right our wrongs by getting married to the person. We should literally ask God to step in, give you the grace to let go. Um, again, I tried to become religious like a Pharisee just to technically follow the law of God with the marriage thing to be guiltless. But I tried again, not listening to that Holy Spirit. But the word says that, um, and this is a scripture so that you guys know, I'm not just saying this. It is a scripture. It's, um, let's see, uh, Romans chapter eight, verse 14. 
So Romans chapter 8, verse 14, I believe. Let's see. Um, yes. For those who are led by the Spirit of God are the children of God. And then let's go on up to uh, Romans chapter 8, verses 3 and 4. For what the law was powerless to do because it was weakened by the flesh, God did by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh to be a sin offering. And so he condemned sin in the flesh in order that the righteous requirement of the law might be fully met in us who do not live according to the spirit or who do not live according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. So again, when we're Christians, we can't even try to act like, oh yeah, I'm going to just um, keep my Sabbath. I'm going to uh, make sure I don't eat uh, pork and ham uh, and then I'll be good. Like, no, we live by the spirit today. That's what that means. Um, so because of that, um, we just, we need to really understand and and, and, and I mean, just be encouraged, not even to condemn you guys or anything like that, but let's just be encouraged. God is calling us higher. What an honor. He's calling us higher. He wants what's best for us. As we read earlier in the scriptures, everything will work for the good. He wants what's best for us. And sometimes that means we're going to have to give up some things in this life. Um, it may hurt, but again, God is working everything for the good. Um... So that's pretty much my video today, guys. Thanks for watching. If you're not a believer in Jesus Christ, but maybe something in this video touched your heart um, and you would like to uh, just follow this Jesus, this Jesus character that we're talking about, um, or maybe um, if you already are a child of God and you, you know, you just need to be reignited um, on fire for God, um, you understand that you may be doing some of these things, um, just let's just put God first as we pray this prayer okay everybody close your eyes let's say this together as a big old family Heavenly Father I come before you I'm sorry Lord I repent of my sins Lord I believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross and he raised from the grave on the third day Holy Spirit guide me in this life speak to me in all things set me on fire god i receive you in jesus name amen hallelujah well thank you guys for watching again it was a pleasure just spilling my heart out to you all it's like what three in the morning i could not sleep uh, because god was really just putting this message heavy on my heart and i'm probably gonna go back to sleep now but um, thanks again for watching. I love you guys and I'll see you in the next video.